So one thing I wanted to talk about was to let the listener know how we even started this, why we started this, the big, the everything. So I'll let you take it off. Uh, I think it's like a year ago. I want to say it was like a year ago, similar, maybe a year or some months or something like that. Uh, I remember we were talking. Well, it's because we always talk. We always, we've always had these talks where we just talk for a few hours and it's random. And I remember you telling me, you know, we could do a podcast because I have, I have the, the know-how. We, we have, we had a camera at the time. We had, we had everything that we needed in order to be able to start up, even if it wasn't as good quality, but we had everything. And then. We started talking about what just, was yeah just just looking back on it huh uh one of the things like i told you is like how cool would it be just to look back on it as we're older that's but that's what sold me at first i was thinking like we do it anyways right so and i feel like a lot of times we talk about shit that i'm like it, it puts me to think on certain subjects in a different light because it's whenever you talk to someone and you bounce ideas off of someone, it seems like when you hit when they hit you with your their perspective, sometimes it opens up avenues that you weren't thinking of. So I was like, maybe this for whoever listens, could whenever they're listening to us, they're like, Oh, I didn't think about it in that way. Uh and it'd be cool. Just on looking back on it. Right? Cause I feel like, but also we I feel like we had a lot of <clears throat> We had a lot of like deep conversations and I remember like, like what if we just record it? Just, just thinking of us, not really even thinking of like doing a podcast, but I just felt like if we can record and capture the moment, it would be tight. It would be tight to look back on. That's why I felt like, I felt like, but the idea came, yeah, it was about a year ago. It was about a year ago. And I, I was just, cause I always come up with ideas and I remember pitching it to you. But I didn't really know like how you were gonna feel about it. I just knew, I just wanted to run it by you to see what you what you would say. Cause it was one thing that I felt like, because I do music for those who don't know. So I felt like I wanted to do something that, well, first of all, with you involved, and then wanna do something that's completely ours. And I felt like that would be hella tight. And that's why I ran it by you. And I, I, I how did you feel initially when I told you that? Or because I pitched like three ideas to you, right? Yeah. Well, I was thinking when this one in particular, I remember you telling me like, "Hey, we have we have everything we need, right?" But then I said, "We capable, huh?" Yeah, to to do it. And then I'm like, "Well, then I'm like, we started thinking about okay, well, what will we speak on?" And it's like we're doing, we're gonna speak on the same shit we're doing now. Uh, we're just gonna we're just gonna record it. Yeah, we're like, gonna record it and we're just gonna put it up. And I was like, it it just sounded like. I felt like it, it was it was a good idea, but what really sold me, hundred percent, where like I'm down, is when you told me, um, these conversations will be recorded forever, and it'll be you can upload them and you can have them forever. So <clears> you can look <throat> back. I started thinking, and I remember telling my dad, we can thirty years from now, my dad's gonna be eight in his eighties, like late eighties, and I'll be like close sixties or some, somewhere around there or whatever. And I remember telling my dad, cause I heard it from you. Um, we can look back at this conversation it's recorded in good quality, decent quality. And we can be like to whoever's alive or present at the time. Like for this the, I think, I think for like, right. Cause our nieces and nephews and not even, not even just them. If we have a kid one day, the fact that they can, listen to us right even at like because i would have loved to have been able to you know to see where my dad's mind was at when he was 20 when he was in his 20s or even my mom's mind and because we all grow right so it'd be interesting to see like what were they back then and what what were the things they were thinking about and i feel like now that we're able we're able to record our conversations it almost feels like not documenting is like a mistake because we we, we're going through all these memories and I feel like they can be captured. And instead of just remembering them from our brain, you can relive them. You can re, yeah, you can relive them through a photo. And right now, all we got is video. 
one day we probably have like VR, 3D, dimensional type stuff. I don't know. But for now, we gotta we gotta we gotta take advantage of what we have. That's how I feel. I think that's important. But those were your first thoughts. Yeah, I, I knew. I I didn't know. I first thought I'm like, man, for to do this for like an hour, two hours seems like a long ass time. But when you when you get in oh, here, well, it is a long time. Huh? It is a long time for the listener, but for us, just in here, it seems like two hours is nothing. Well, last time, right? Because the other one was like one hour and fifty minutes. It was actually longer than that, but we had to cut it off. Yeah. So if you're if you're wondering why we cut it off, it's because our cameras died. Two of our cameras died, and one over. And here. that's why I had a result to just keeping one angle. But hopefully, everything goes well today, and we got like a good episode. Yeah. But that's what that's going back to the to the podcast thing. Like, like did you feel like did you feel like immediately like like what I felt because like when I was when I was pitching you the idea it was just an idea like I just because like I told you like I said before I have ideas I have a lot of ideas and I remember I told you and I don't know I don't remember the conversation we had but I remember we were in the truck and we were going to Chase Bank and I was telling you about it I pitched you a couple ideas and uh what was I gonna say oh okay I remember now well, like, I remember I told you, and then what, like two or three months passed, something like that. I don't know. I don't know how long it was, but you brought it back up. You brought it back up. And and the reality of it is, if you didn't bring it back up, this shit probably would never happen. And and because like, yeah, I, I thought about it, but it was just an idea because I felt like the podcast shit, you had to be on board. Like if you were on board, then who am I going to do the podcast with? Well, myself. Like I know some people do that, but just to me it wasn't it didn't seem as interesting. And like so so when you were on board and then you you had some time to think about it and you were on board, that's where I was like, oh shit, like, okay, we can do this. And then especially you going like full, full hardcore with it and fucking funding the whole thing. I I, I the one thing I, I just cause I feel like I got you know a lot of stuff when it comes to tech stuff right when it comes to quality when it comes to uh format video stuff that i don't know shit about so any hooking up mics how to record and i'm like if 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 it's it's so easy for me so why not do it i just gotta be present i just gotta come in and i remember thinking like it'd be cool i was looking at tables i wanted i wanted a solid table to, to have so that Cause it, so we can have like enough room for whatever we need. Yeah, it's a big ass table too. So I was like, I need to build a table, and I always had interest in building shit out of wood, but I didn't never had a reason to. And when I looked up the prices for tables for like solid wood tables, shit was hella expensive, and I was like, I'll just make it. And it's not. It's just dirty. Yeah, well, like just make it clear, like you made this table. So the table you're seeing, he made this shit. And we even drilled the hole right here for the for the wires and stuff. And this studio itself, we built it together. All from the idea. And how long did it take us to set this shit up? Um because I don't remember how long it was. How was what it? were we waiting for? Because we I remember we ordered we ordered the mics. Yeah, like count everything from like the when it was like full go mode, like start buying shit. Well, when I came, when I, when I, I remember when I told you, like, yeah, I think we should do it and started looking into mics or whatever. And you said, I already know what, what mics and headphones and whatever. And we, and we put that order. That was the initial first purchase that we made. And it, but then it just sat for a little bit. And we were, I was looking at, I was looking at tables. I remember it just it took me like two, two or three months to build. And I thought it was going to take me like, it was that long. I, Cause it I didn't seem like it was that long. Cause remember how I would I would come home, I would well first I bought the wood right, I bought the wood and I bought a shit ton of tools that I didn't even know I was gonna need. Yeah, I remember that. I bought a shit ton of shit and then I cut this motherfucker, <laughs> and then I had to sand it, I had to, I had to sand it, I had to glue it, and it took forever. It took forever coming home and then sanding it and then then staining it and then re-sanding it and then staining it. But it I was only working a few hours. A day? Yeah. So what would you say? Like, how long was it in total from from when we started to what I'd they- I'd say like eight months. 
Eight, it was eight, like eight months. Yeah, because it's, we've been talking about it since last, since, since the year. Yeah, it was like December of 2021 or, or earlier, maybe a month or two earlier. So it took us eight months to bring it to life. I feel like we did pretty good. Yeah, well, Four. it's because we ran into roadblocks where we, like, it, it wasn't up to, it wasn't up to, like, I feel like the quality of, the, of, of everything seems good. Like, it's, it's, it's up to where I'm like, yeah, it's, it's tight. Because it just seems like we we got everything we need. Why not do the best quality we can from the jump? And it's like, now that we, now that we're here, right? It's like, this shit's worth it. Yeah, and it's just go time. Right? So now we just got to start putting And it's out. the same thing. And it's a, it's a, it's a, what do you call it? Like an adjustment, you know, that you have to make. Because it's like going just from normal. It's like, you can't ignore this shit, right? It's just here, and because you're not used to it, it's a little different. But I think we'll get it down. I think it, I think. I know we just need to keep doing it. It's just practice with everything. I told I told my mom yesterday. I was like, "Shit's just gonna get better as you go, so long as you keep doing it." And we're too far in already. We're too far in, and this is not even bad. This is I feel like this is it's enjoyable, and it's and it's not. It takes us, uh, a, it takes us more in the you know editing, doing all that other shit. But as far as just coming here and, and doing this, it seemed like. An hour and a half goes by hella fast. Yeah. So, like, um, yeah, I know you told me you wanted you wanted to talk about something. What did you want to talk about? So, I, I wanted to see when it came to if you could if you could for the, anyone who's listening, if you could give them any advice. Shit, me. <clears throat> if you can give them any advice when it came to trying to make life, because life sucks. It's, and it's it, depending on who you are and what environment you came up in, life sucks like a motherfucker for some more than others. And I'm like, as like, what type of advice would you give to either someone solo that's like s single child, right? Just and that's like feels that life is hard right now, and he's trying to find <clears> an avenue. <throat> To make money or to just to just have a, a easier life well, and less stressful life. Well, I would say, and then this is my opinion, you know, uh, I would say that life is about perspective. And I learned that. And I feel like you really gotta take time to yourself. You know, you really gotta better yourself. I feel like a lot of people don't do that. And you might be like, how do I do that? Right? Well, there's plenty of plenty of ways, but like just educating yourself. If you're interested in something, read upon it. Read a book. If you don't like to read, read a book. Fuck it. Just one. Do something out of the normal for you. Don't just sit in your comfort zone. Because when you're in your comfort zone, like nothing's going to happen. Nothing's going to change. You have to do something different. And like when something bad happens, like people just see what happens, right? But like you got to analyze what just happened. And I know it's hard to look at the good of the situation. But as long as you're alive, you have loved ones, right? You have people who care about you. And if you don't, like you're a human being, right? If I see you, it's what's up, you know? Like I have, I have, I have that mentality with everybody. So as long as you have people who love you and everything, you'll be all right. But you have to wake up, in my opinion, with trying to better yourself, trying to become the ultimate version of you. Every day. And that would never end. So, because I, I feel like you have to have a reason to wake up. There got to be motivation. There got to be something, right? You just can't wake up and just do the same thing and become a robot. You got to be excited for something. And you might be like, yeah, yeah, I got a nine to five and I got this and I got this and I got kids and it's hard for me to do stuff, stuff like that. But you can find five minutes. You can find 10. Do shit you wouldn't normally do. That's what I did because I feel like I spent a lot of time with myself. And when I found myself and I know who I am, I feel like anything is possible. I, just, I feel like if I put my mind to it, I can do it. And I know it's like, like you could say it's like corny shit, right? Believe it, dream it, that type of shit. But think about it. If you don't believe in yourself, who the fuck's going to believe in you? And if you don't believe in yourself, nothing's going to happen. Just do what you want to do, and that way, when it's time, it's your time to go. You could be happy with yourself. 
don't live in regret. So that's what I would say. You yeah, know, that, that's a small thing that I would say. You know, I, I, I would say just keep trying to better yourself. That's what I would say. And for that's mainly for people. Well, I mean, that's for anyone, right? That's for I, anyone. But uh, so I'm thinking too, when it comes to siblings, I feel like there's, I feel like people under underestimate the power that you have when you form a really strong bond with, with a sibling. Not only just a sibling, a friend. Oh yeah. Or a friend. Anybody who's down with you, anybody who shares the same ideas with you or thoughts as you or like. Somebody who's not going to put you down, somebody who's going to give you the extra push, yeah, yep. you need that motherfucker around you. So when you find them, you got to learn how to see and, oh shit, this person's a good person. Oh shit, this person is always trying to motivate me. He's always trying to tell me something. Sometimes that people get put off by that, but like, I just feel like you shouldn't push those people away. That's how I feel. I know you you were gonna move into like the sibling bond, right? In the sibling bond, I get it, cause like just how mine and yours is, like we're crazy, right? Like unbreakable shit. I don't think nothing can come between what we have, right? Nobody could fuck it up, period. And I feel like people need that, right? But some people are less fortunate and they don't have that, and that sucks. It sucks when you don't have nobody, and. uh but what I would say, to you, if you don't have nobody, I would say go out and try to find somebody, right? I know a lot. I know it's hard, right? Because you're not just going to find somebody, but you have to try. It sucks. And especially if you're like antisocial, because I'm antisocial. I don't, I don't wake up like, let me go talk to a bunch of people. I just, I don't know. I just stick to myself. So if you're that way. It would go back to stepping out of your comfort zone. You have to step out of your comfort zone. If you don't, you can't expect shit to change. So uh, that's what I that's what I would say to that. But it's it's very hard giving advice because, you know, I I don't know. It's, everybody has their own story. Everybody's in a different situation. Some people don't need anyone, huh? They just got it. They're like it's a lot because it's that much more work to try to find someone. That I just focus on myself. I feel like yeah, I feel like that's it's kind of rare. I think because I think I, we all need somebody. I know, and it just seems like there's there's been so many times. That's why whenever we run into any issue, right? When it comes to any issue, before we make a decision on anything, we always like, "Hey, what do you think about this? This is what I'm thinking, right?" You bounce it off you, bounce it off my dad. But you, it, if you don't have that one, uh, that person to bounce it off of, um, you're just gonna have to do the best you can. But it, it it's. I guess it's real. It just it just makes me feel lucky. Like I got I got them already. I already have people, right? It just makes me feel <clears> lucky <throat> and that much more appreciative of what I got. And there's always a reason to be grateful. Like look around you, right? E even if you live by yourself, you still got a house. You still got running water. You still got food, right? There's homeless people. Yeah. And then you can keep going down, right? There's worse than homeless people. And then. There's people who like, who die as babies. And I, and it, it's, and it, it, I know it's hard for me to sit here and tell somebody that maybe like, because I, I don't know your situation. I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to give like any piece of advice that I feel can help somebody. That's it. It's up to you to listen to me and say, Hey, okay, I, I fuck with what he's saying here, but I don't fuck with this. It's up to you to pick it apart. But at the end of the day, you don't have to listen to me. You know, who the fuck am I? Do what's in your best interest and do what makes you happy, whatever that is. Yeah, that's why whenever somebody asks me for advice, I tell them that shit too. Especially at work when they're like, what do you think I should do? And I'm like, I I'll tell, every time somebody asks me my opinion on what they should do, I'll tell them, regardless of where, where it's at. And I'll tell them, but at the end of the day, you know, fuck what I say, fuck what I think. You always got to do whatever you think is best for you because... Like, if you're not looking out for yourself, then, you know, who who's going to look out for you? You got to always, it seems like you always just got to, you always got to, I was telling this dude um, the other day, uh, like, it, it's good. Change is good. There's been a lot of times where in my life where, like, some shit's happened, where it's like I had no choice. I just had to jump, jump ship from job to job. And I'm like, 
I remember thinking like, man, I got to start over. So going somewhere else, you take a risk of, especially when you don't have nothing lined up. You just take the risk of making less money. You take the risk of the people around you. And then yeah. you lose your friends, right? You lose yeah. the people you're already cool with. So to start over again, you're like, damn, I don't know in my new job if I'm going to be cool with these people. And and it's just going to, if you're not cool with the people, then it just makes that job worse. Yep. But I think you always got to be like, you always got to be positive about it. And it's because seemed, there's no reason yeah. to be negative. It seemed like every time I did, shit always went, shit always went good. Shit always went good. And, the, and I always, it seemed like for whatever reason, I get along with damn near everyone. I like, it's so easy, but it's like, I don't know why that is, but I, it, maybe because I just keep it to myself the majority of the time and I only speak to people when I need to speak to them, which I fuck with that. So like when you're at work, do you think people, people see you as antisocial? <laughs> I think so. Yeah. Yeah. I think Are you so. just keep like, Cause it's just like, I'm locked to that one section. Damn you're all day. Locked Cause you don't section. go out of your way to go speak to somebody. No, nah, I'm just there. Unless I, it's business. Unless I need them for something. Like, yeah. It, well, business-wise, right? Because yeah, yep. it's for your job. Something to do with the job, yeah. Unless, sometimes I do, like, if I'm, if I'm, like, let's say I was going to the bathroom or whatever, and I'll bump, then I just come across somebody. Because we get along, I get along with everyone. So, sometimes, but majority of the time, I'm not the one that starts the conversation. Somebody else will say something, and then I sit there and have a conversation with them. But there is times where I just go up to people and just, um, just because if, if we're slow or whatever, and I just go to the bathroom and I see somebody. I mean, cause it's all, it's all, a lot of people that work there are my age or younger. So it's like, it's easier to talk to people who are a uh, similar age to you. Yeah. Just cause they can, they can relate with a lot of the stuff that, you know, but even the old dudes though, one of the oldest dudes there is like 65 and he just retired, but I would talk to him for like an hour sometimes and it'd just be like about life or whatever. Like I would ask him just questions on like how things were back in the day when he used to not do this and yeah. he used to drive semi. And it's like, you learn a lot. You learn a lot from old people when you talk to them. Yeah. I didn't even think I would just talk to him just to be nice. Cause you talk to me, so I just talk to him. But then you're like, you don't really realize like this, there's not, a, there's a lot of knowledge in these old people. And if you just talk to them for a little bit, they'll tell you like, Hey, do this, don't do this. Yeah. But it feels like sometimes it's, it's hard having, well, it's hard giving people advice, right? Because some you don't know how they're going to take it. And it's almost like, like you, I don't want people to think like I'm saying I'm better than them or something. So like when I, or you know better, huh? like I know better. Yeah. Because I, like I'm just going through life too. So I feel like it's hard to give people advice and just the, just the expectation of how you're going to take it. Are you gonna be? Are you gonna get upset, or are you gonna be like, you're too, you're younger than me, or something like that? You're younger than me, so who are you to give me advice? Because some people think like that. I don't, I don't think like that. I think you learn from anybody, and I think like, all you have to do is listen. Like, remember, you don't have to take their advice. You can just listen to what they gotta say and be like, like I just said, pick it apart. Oh, he said some good shit here. Oh, I never thought about that. Oh, but I disagree with him here. Just like you, you can make your own decisions. So you don't, when it comes to advice, you don't have to take everything. You could just pick it apart, take what you like. When, um, like, you know, how I got into the stock market and the crypto and all that shit. Yeah. Um, the only reason why I got into that was because one of the, so one of the dudes that I work with, I think he's, I think he's like 22, 23. And he, he was talked, he was talking, he was talking to me about, uh, he puts money into it. And he made, he, he made a few, he made a few hundred bucks here and there or whatever. And then I told him like, what do you put your money into? And then he told me what app he uses. Right. And I started looking into it. And that's the whole, that's the whole reason why, you know, how I, you, how you, uh, you gave money to my dad so he can invest into the stock market. Remember? Yeah. And then I just threw it into something and then we got lucky and this shit doubled yeah, up. Yeah, shit did double. And I'm like, so the only reason why that all happened was because that I that he told me about it. And I I I whenever there's money and somebody's telling me how to make money, I d I'll I'll listen. And even though he's younger than me, he's like six years younger than me. And I'm like, well, I don't care how what your age is, because if he's telling me something I don't know, I'm gonna listen. And just because I listen, right, it led to that. And then I then it led to crypto. And there's super it's crazy high risk. Yeah, I'd much rather stick to something that's more 
guaranteed. But it's like if you want money, if you want to make money, if you get if you get educated enough in that, there's money in that. I think there's money in a lot of places that you wouldn't think of. It's money in everywhere. And I think you have to invest, even if it's a little bit, because you know, depending on what you can afford to invest, you shouldn't gamble at all. But you definitely should invest in something. Like do some research because why just have your money in the bank? And I understand like risks. Risk is tough. For a lot of people, they won't even want to risk it. Like, what if I lose $100? What if I lose 200 But sometimes you got to be willing to risk it. It's just like the fucking... Nah, it's not like that. I was going to say it's just like the fucking casino or gambling. But gambling, I feel like... I don't... I just feel like that's a lose situation. Because it's the casinos, right? That Like, they, wouldn't, they know you're going to lose. And okay, you may win once, but then you go back and you lose four more times. So that's why I don't like the casino. I'd rather invest it and then lose it. Because a lot of time when you invest into something, yeah, you may lose money, but you still get some of it back. So you may lose money in the stock market, but you'll get a little bit back. And it's better to get something, right, from your loss. Yeah, lose, yeah. learn, and still get some money back than just lose completely. You can lose it all. You can't, like, damn near all. Um, like in the stock market. What I... What I when I did it, it's because I, I fucked up. You, so you, a lot of times when you when you put money, you, when you start investing in shit you don't really know about. The only way I usually get interested in stuff, like I start paying attention to it, is I gotta have money on the line to make it interesting. Yeah. Like when I when I like for when I made this table, I, I used good quality wood, which I probably shouldn't have because it's my first table that I made. But I knew if I if it was if it was gonna cost me money, I'm gonna do my best to come out to for it to come out as best as it, as it possibly can. But for the stock market, I think I fucked up because I. I w- so I would I would never try to invest a shit ton of money like put it all in one one go like in one stock I wouldn't I wouldn't do that especially when it's like everything that you've won everything that you've won that you accumulated from multiple different stocks and you finally like start you make good money and you take it all out and you put it because my idea was like if I put a shit ton of money into something the uh, if it if it does end up m- you don't going up. Boom, yeah. Yeah, you're going to make it. That's that's how you really make big boy money. Yeah, because if you only put like 20 and you double, you get 40. Yes, yeah, 40. Instead right. of just putting a thousand and you get another thousand. Yeah. And I was like, I was thinking like, put a few grand into something and then it will, the, the, just because I was, I was cocky because I was making, you know, a little bit of money on different stocks and I'm like, I'll pull it all out and I'll, I'll just look at the market and see what. Look at, I would look at the data to see whether or not it, where it's been and where it's gone. And I was. Yeah. I, Cause I, I was going to say, like, when you were in, when you were doing all this, were you looking up like, uh, videos on the stock market or were yeah, you, was, were you getting coached by that guy at the, at your job? Well, he gave me an advice as far as like, not nah, risky. He told me like, like, don't risk all, don't risk no, all. No, he told me like, don't put it into a certain, put it into like, it was a, it was called, um, he, it was the Fidelity. It was a specific app or stock that was with Fidelity that is like gives you so much return on average or whatever. So it's like more safe. It wasn't like uh, it wouldn't just go up and down real aggressively. Um, and I did do that, and it went up. But I but it just didn't see. I didn't see any like impressive growth. And because I'm a I feel like when when you're young, if you if you can, if you can afford to, when you're young is the best time to take all risk, heavy risk. Yeah, because if you don't have no family. Yeah, you, you don't have nobody to take care of. Yeah, you don't have when you so don't have, you, when you're just thinking of yourself. I feel yeah. like everything at the wall, go, right? Hardcore. Go crazy. Yeah, because I mean, money's just money, right? If you lose it, if you lose it, you can always make it back. You just gotta work. You just gotta work, save a little bit more, and then. But you know, it's just scary. It's just scary, right? Because when you, especially like, I, I don't, when, you, when it's your first, were you risking it at something and to put a high amount or, and you're just like, damn, what if I lose it? And I, I could just save it and it'll just keep saving. Yeah. But if I lose it, then what gone. it just goes back to not, not, not using it all. Just do a little bit, try a little bit, huh? play with it. Cause I don't know shit about the, the stock market. There's certain, there's certain, on certain apps, there's like dummy accounts where you can pretend you can just yeah, pretend yeah. money and like you put it into something and then so you get to learn how, how it works and once yeah, but it's like 
it's like live, like it's the actual stock. Yeah, it's the actual stock. So it's like, let's say you get like a thousand dollars pretend money, yeah. right? You invest it into something and then you see it, you can invest it into whatever you want, right? As much as you want or whatever, but you have a limit and then you can see how you did for the month or whatever. And there's like charts and stuff. That sounds like a subscription shit. I don't know if it is. I never did it, but I mean, I, that sounds I, like a good thing, right? But it would kind of suck though. Like if you're, if you get that practice money or like that dummy yeah. app and then you put like that thousand or something and then, then you doubled it and you're like, fuck, I could have really doubled it. Yeah. yeah. But it's like, it's like, you just never know. Some of it's luck and then th- some, some, there's people who, who really break it down so they know what, but there's like people who studied it for a long time, know what they're doing, but it's just like, when I don't, I don't have, when I don't have the love into something, it's hard to really, it's hard to really put up, focus all your time into it. So I, I, cause I was looking at, so I'm looking at crypto. I'm looking at, um, I'm looking at the stock market. I'm looking at trying to fix cars on the side, trying to do all this shit. And then plus trying to make sure every responsibility that I have outside of that is, is taken care of. It just seems like there's a lot of shit to do all the time. And it's just, I don't know. It just seems like it takes a lot of time. So I, I would just look into it. I would look, I was looking more into it back when I had money in there. Uh, yeah. You don't have money in it now? Why? Because you know how, what we pulled out, we pulled out and where my dad's was and I gave it to him. Yeah. Right. My shit stayed there. And because I put all my shit, I took everything out of everywhere and I put it in one place. It seemed like, in like, it was like, this was, this was like a year ago. So like a year and a half ago. Yeah. Somewhere around there. And it just, just started tanking. And you and and now you, only have like $200 in there. And you just left it in there? Yeah, I just left it in there because it's like 200 what I need $200 for. And the I never liked the fact that whenever you, you, you only lose until you sell. And you pull, right? You pull out. Yeah, so it's like the, the odds of it coming back are, is probably really low, but it's like, I'll just leave it in there 10 years to see what happens. Thank you for listening to the AB Podcast. You can follow us in the links below. All our social medias are linked there. If you want to buy some merch, the merch that we're usually wearing in the podcast, you can buy it as well. The link will be below.